Hey guys, a little while ago, we made a Facebook post where we promised to show you how to light your scenes. Turns out our artist was working really hard learning all the colors and has just now released a course about it on Udemy. What you're about to watch is a video explaining all you need to know about lighting a low poly environment in Unity. This video was extracted from our artist course on Udemy and if you'd like to learn more about creating these assets and the process we needed, enroll in the courses right now using our special coupon code and 3k boobs for a sweet discounts. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and I'll now let El Fluff take over. Hello guys, welcome back to lesson 6. In this video, what we are going to do is simply light our scene. As you can see, this is our end result. Now, if you can remember, in our texture video, we've used orange monochromes for stones and torch and we've even used green on grass. So this time, just like I said in that past video, we are going to add shades and tints of yellow into the mix to make everything come together as your one and only analogous color scheme. And we are going to use that for lighting. All right, so now that you know what we are going to do, I'm gonna go ahead and transfer to Unity. So make sure that your scene is open right here. So the first thing that you're going to do is go to File, hit Build Settings, and hit Player Settings. What you're going to do here is make sure your color space is on gamma, not linear. Now by default, Unity is going to be on gamma, which is good because that is what we are mainly going to use. Now, one of the key difference between gamma and linear is when the light intensifies in your scene. As you can see here on this picture, on gamma, your mesh kind of becomes whitewash, whereas on linear, it kind of spread the light evenly in your mesh and it looks good. But I find that when we use gamma on low light settings, it reduces the jaggedness of what linear is going to produce, especially if the anti-aliasing is off and we're using post-processing stack. You can see here on this image that the jaggedness, even with anti-aliasing on, is very visible on linear on a very low light settings, whereas on gamma, it kind of like smoothen it out. And that is mainly what we want. So keep this in gamma. The next thing that you're going to do is just close this and go to edit, hover on project settings and click quality. You are going to turn off the anti-aliasing because we are going to enable this in our post-processing stack that we are going to import later on in this project. So after disabling this, go ahead and go to your main camera. You are going to make sure that rendering pad is on forward. Now we transfer in forward because we don't have much light into our scene. Forward is used on like mobile or kind of like VR games, whereas deferred is more used on like a light intensive game thing, desktop games where there's a lot of lights involved. And also make sure that the allow HDR is checked. It simply means that if it's enabled, we don't lose much details on areas that are overexposed or underexposed. And we can't really use our color grading in our post-processing stack if this is off. So make sure this is checked right here. And we are going to disable the multi-sample anti-aliasing. Same reason we disable the anti-aliasing in the quality because we are going to enable it in our post-processing stack. So the next thing that we are going to do is go to your asset store and go ahead and type here post-processing stack. Now, if I type here post-processing, it should just automatically show this one. This one is what we need right here. And just go ahead and click this. Now, I've already downloaded mine, so all I have to do is import this, but you are going to have the download button here. And just go ahead and click download. After it's done downloading, you're just going to simply press import. And after it's done decompressing, as you can see, make sure everything is checked and just go ahead and press import again. And as you can see right here, it adds a folder called post processing. And this is what we need. Later on in our project, we are going to drag this into our UNT technologies folder, but we are not going to do that until all of the filters is set up. Because sometimes if we enable a filter, and the post-processing folder happens to be under another folder. Sometimes it turns your whole scene into pink and sometimes it just doesn't work. So we are going to leave this right here for now. So go back to your scene. What we are going to do next is simply go to your main folder and go to skybox because we are going to create a procedural skybox. So right click here, hover on create and click material. 
can go ahead and name this skybox one so what you're going to do next is change your shader into here on the skybox and you are going to hit procedural now there is three types of skybox procedural is more of like unity based where you can just adjust the gradients and so cube map is more of like an hdr map the maps that they use on the rendering software is like Marmoset Toolbag. And six-sided skybox are mostly like different image that you are going to like kind of stitch together. Now there's tons of free skyboxes out there on your asset store. But I've also provided links to free HDR maps on your resources folder. So make sure you just download the text document in your resources folder. And you can try out the different types of skybox right here. But go ahead and click procedural because we are going to use this. And as you can see right here, it should look something like this. So the next thing that we're going to do is we are going to left mouse click and just basically drag this into our sky here. And as you can see, you will know that this is live and working and that this is your current skybox if you adjust your sun size and it adjusts just like that. We want our sun size to be something like, um, say, 0.055. We don't want this to be really big or really too small, so that's fine with me. And the next settings that we are going to mess with is our atmosphere thickness. Now, as you can see right here, the more you drag this up, the more it thickens it becomes. And if you drag this down, the thickness disappear. So we are going to keep this around, let's see, I think 0.5 is okay. The next thing that we have is our sky tint here. So go ahead and click this. And just copy the colors that I've pasted here. Just like I said, we are going to use orange in our sky box, but kind of a different shade, right? So as you can see here, it's not really going to turn our sky into a bright orange because we're just basically applying a tint, just like it says here. And on the ground, go ahead and click the color here and just change it into another shade of orange, but more of like on the saturated side right here. You can always just drag this and kind of put your color like this. But if you want to be specific, just copy the values that I put here. All right, so your skybox should look like this. Keep in mind that we're making a nighttime scene. So the skybox is really going to be kind of dark once we adjust our direction of light. The way we are going to light this is our light is going to be coming from the back. The sides here are going to be kind of illuminated and the whole front in here is going to be kind of dark. But we are going to have like a point light right here that's going to emit light on different um, sides because we are going to have a portal here they are going to emit light so we are going to have light on the front too but not so much on the back the next thing that you're going to do is go to your lighting tab if this is not open go to window and it should be right here in settings now i'm going to go ahead and close this so you can see how i drag that open your lighting lighting settings and it should be pop in right here and just kind of left mouse click and drag it here and what you're going to make sure is make sure your source right here is your skybox because if it's not your environment will derive colors from either color and if you adjust the color it's going to copy the color from there as if that is your skybox or here in gradients and we don't want that so make sure you're on skybox so the next thing that you're going to do i'm going to go ahead and just press f so I can zoom in, well I can just press say F after clicking this so I can zoom in on a mesh or an object. I'm just going to put that like that. The next thing that you're going to do is go ahead and open your lighting and click direction of light. If you don't have this, you can always just click here first, and right click and then hover on light and click direction of light. And that's how you add a direction of light. So after you've add that, what you're going to do next is basically just right click here and reset. Make sure that your light is in the middle of your portal, but at the very bottom, just like this. But if we put this on the side, it's right here, level to your portal. 
And what we're going to do is basically just adjust this. So you can either press W, and you can move it like that, or however you want, whichever axis you want. Or you can also hover on the letters here, your X axis, your Y, your Z, and it should move that. Now, say you hover this on the right, right? And you move this on the left. And yours is moving about the opposite way. Like, if you kind of move this on the right and yours move on the left, is basically because you are on the wrong camera perspective. Like, maybe if you put your camera in here, and your controls are the opposite, and your level is facing this way. What you can do to fix that is, you can just go to your level, and kind of press E to rotate, and just kind of rotate this about 180 degrees on the Y. And after you're done rotating that, you are going to click every single child in your level parent, drag it outside your level, make sure when you drag it out it looks like this, not like that. And after you kind of drag that there, what you're going to do is zero in the position and rotation of your empty game object, which is the level. And after that, you are just going to drag back your child here, back to your level. And that's how basically you are going to fix your scene if you're on the wrong movements or rotation per se. And make sure that you go back to your prefab folder and update your level right here. Just left mouse click and drag it here to update it. So I'm going to go back to our lighting. I'm going to reset this again. And basically, what I'm going to do is just rotate this on the x-axis. This is red, so I know that is the x-axis. This is blue, and that is blue, so I know that's the z-axis. So I'm going to rotate this on the x-axis. Because I want the front to be dark, but at the same time, I want the back to be bright. So, I'm going to do is let the sun kind of sunset out of our scene, just like this. As you can see, we have lights on the back and we don't have lights on the front. And I'm going to mess with this on the Y axis and just kind of rotate this like this to have lights on the side here, just like what I said. And about this setting right here. Alright, so this is good enough for me. Alright, so what you're going to do next is go ahead and click your color and change your hex color into this values. So like I said, we are going to use yellow, but around this side of our picker right here. And I'm just going to press enter. And your light should look like this. Now it looks kind of weird right now, but once we add post-processing stack, it shouldn't look this weird. So I'm going to rotate this again to kind of spread more light right here. And just kind of still make this a little bit dark maybe something like this i'm going to kind of lower down my intensity something 0.5 is okay all right so this is good enough so the next thing that we're going to do is we are going to add a point light into our scene so go ahead and right click on your lighting and just hover on light and click point light now the reason that we right click on your lighting is that so when we add a point light, it's automatically parented to this empty game object right here, just like you see right here. And I'm just going to name this um, portal light. Because once we add our VFX, this is going to be the light that kind of emits a kind of like a glow effect into our portal. So I'm going to go ahead and kind of press W and drag this out like this and kind of drag it out on the z-axis because I want this to be kind of illuminated, right? And we are going to first adjust the color. So go ahead and click the color here and just copy the values that I'm going to paste here. And as you can see, we're using another shade of yellow or somewhere here in the middle, like yellow green. But this is mainly the color that we are going to use. Now you can either like pause this video and you can always click this, click on the color picker right here, and you can always drag 
wherever you want in your computer. Now, I'm on a text document right now and say I want to sample the letter T. I can just press this and just like that, the color is copy. As long as you click this first and just hover on whichever part of the scene that you want to copy the color from. So that's one way. But I'm going to stick with yellow. Just like this. So I'm going to go ahead and close this. And we are going to kind of adjust our range. So you can either adjust it here. If you hover and your mouse kind of change into this icon, you can always drag it in like that and drag it out. But I kind of want mine to be a little bit... Let's see. Something like this. This is good. I'm going to click this and kind of put it here a bit. Alright. So just like that, we have a color in the middle of our portal. What I'm going to do next though is go to my materials folder. Right click here and create another material. I'm going to name this ground. So the way we are going to apply this is I'm just going to drag this material here and just let go on the plane. Just like that. And I'm going to change the color into black. Because I don't want the colors coming from the lights to be kind of too much on the ground. Maybe put this here a bit. Something like something like this. Yeah. Alright, so after this is done, we are gonna add a bunch of point lights into our torch here and our fire thingies here. So we can just duplicate this, hit Ctrl V, and kind of rename this. So I'm just basically double clicking to kind of enable the naming thing. So I'm just going to name this a Torch Light. I'm going to go to my Y axis. Make sure you're on isometric view so everything is flat. And I'm going to drag this here. I'm just going to press F. So as you can see, the bigger your range is, when you press F, it kind of zoom out. So I can drag the range here. As you can see, it can zoom in now. So you can either drag the range here at the any corner of this. Or you can either just control it here, just like I told you the last time. And I'm going to kind of put this here, close to it, something like this. Let's see, if I make this a little bit bigger, well, this is enough for me. So I'm going to duplicate this again and kind of drag it here and just put it up a bit. Make sure that you check every single axis so that you know that it's level to the right rotation of your object. All right. So, let's see if I make the range bigger on this one. So, I'm just going to name this Torchlight. But I'm going to put here on the right side. I'm going to put R here, so I know which one's which. This is on the left. So, I'm going to go back to my portal light again. Go to my Y axis and hit Ctrl D to duplicate. And I'm going to drag it somewhere here. And like I told you the last time, minimalize the range. And I'm going to go to my x-axis and just kind of put this here a bit. Something like this. Alright. Just going to drag this here like this. I'm going to control T to duplicate and just drag the other one there. Just like this. Make sure to check every angle so you know it's centered. And I'm going to name this um, maybe pillar light. So this is on the left, right? So I'm just going to put here left. I'm just going to change this into pillar. This one is um, on the right. Just put here pillar. 
And I'm going to play around with the intensity of this. So if I drag this up there, as you can see, it becomes more brighter. If I drag it here, it becomes um, dim. So maybe around this is good. One point, maybe 1.5. And in here, maybe, I don't have to make them all the same, 1.6. Now our torch, let's see. If your camera is doing the same thing like me, like this thing right here, when you zoom it in, just click the torch here. Make sure the torch is the only one selected and just press F. So you can zoom in perfectly fine. But I am on the torch left part and maybe turn this up a bit like this what if i make this a little bit bigger so something like this all right so on this side here just intensify this kind of like this and i can i can even drag that outside it doesn't need to be in the middle of this because I want the light to affect here, too, right here. So I'm going to put this here a bit. Maybe change the intensity to something bigger. Something like that. I'm going to drag this here, too, so that it emits light right here in the front. Because we have a light coming here, and it's making this back side brighter too, so something like that. Alright, so let's see this. So I'm going to go back to my directional light and maybe kind of make this, not this one, yeah, kind of darker. So what if I put it on 200? So I'm going to keep that like that for now. Alright, so we are going to end the lighting here, guys. On the next video, we are going to set up our post-processing stack to make the scene glow and give it 50% of its life. Where's the other 50, you say? Well, that's going to be on the VFX main. Alright, enough chit-chat. See you on the next video.